Let's have a look at some important facts regarding capital gains tax. When you dispose of an asset, you only pay capital gains tax on the profit you make when you dispose of the asset, and only a portion of the profit will be added to your normal income for tax. You do not pay CGT on the sale price. If you make a capital gains loss, then no part of the loss may be deducted from your income. A capital gains loss may only be used to reduce capital gain profits on the disposal of other assets. An overall CGT loss may not be used to reduce normal taxable income, but may be carried forward and that loss may be used to reduce the profit on any other assets you dispose of in future. CGT was introduced on 1st of October 2001 and CGT is only applicable on assets disposed of after 1st of October 2001. If you bought an asset before that date and disposed of it now, then no capital gains tax applies to the portion of the profit attributable to the period before 1st of October 2001. Only the portion of the profit attributable to the period after this 1st of October 2001 valuation date is liable for capital gains tax. If you bought an asset before the valuation date, then you had the option of getting the asset appraised or valued on the valuation date. If you did not, then you will have to use a set of complex formulas in the 8th schedule to work out what SAS calls a time apportioned base cost or deemed value on the 1st of October 2001 and this value is used as the base cost. Basically the profit amount liable for capital gains tax is the difference between the base cost and the selling price. Of course, if you acquired the asset after 1st of October 2001, then your profit for capital gains tax is far simpler to work out. It's the selling price, less the purchase price, less improvements, acquisitions and sale costs. Not all of the profit will be taxable. If you are a personal taxpayer, then the total profits of all capital gains transactions will be added together and the first 40,000 Rand of the total profit is exempt as your annual exclusion. 40% of the balance will be added to your normal income for tax. If you are married in community of property, then you and your spouse each get half of the profit and you each get 40,000 Rand annual exclusion. Note that if the asset is a primary residence, then the primary residence exclusion applies to the property and not per spouse. If someone dies during the year, then a normal assessment must be prepared for the period in the year up until the day the taxpayer died. If the taxpayer had any CGT events during the year while he or she was alive, then the annual exclusion is 300,000 Rand. Some of the things affected by CGT in South Africa are shares, unit trusts, land, property and rights to property including your primary residence, holiday homes and timeshare. Large boats over 30 meters in length, aircraft weighing over 450 kilograms, certain coins and the buying and selling of certain properties. Some of the assets exempt from CGT are private vehicles, clothes, jewelry, stamps, art, antiques, personal goods, etc., as well as payouts from policies like RAs, pension, provident funds, etc.